DataStream is a large financial and economic database um, and it includes um, company accounts for publicly listed companies all over the world. It also has a lot of financial information for companies so you can look at daily or weekly or monthly share prices for example. You can look at equities indices, so you can take an index like the FTSE 100 and you can look at aggregate figures for the index or you can look at every company in um, a stock index. DataStream also covers um, interest rates, exchange rates, commodities prices, um, bonds, foreign exchange, derivatives, futures, options. It's a huge database that covers lots of different types of information. If you want to use DataStream, then you can do that um, by booking a session. If you click on the little question mark icon next to DataStream for help information, you'll see that there is information here about how to get access to DataStream. So it's available on two computers that are close to the inquiry desk on level three of the Hartley Library. You can book a session online uh, by clicking on this link here. Um, and then, so once you've booked, you can just come into the library, find the data stream computers, and they're clearly marked data stream, so you know which computers to use, and then you can sit down and use them. When you get to the data stream computer, you'll find that there are two data stream icons, data stream 5.1 and data stream for Excel. And the one that we recommend you use is data stream for Excel. So I will show you what this looks like now. And I'm just going to show you a few examples of some searches that you can try. So if you click on the data stream for Excel icon, you'll find that Excel opens and it looks like normal Excel. The difference is that it has a data stream tab at the top. So you need to click there on the data stream tab to get the data stream controls. So the first thing I want to show you is how you can look at the, com at the accounts for a particular company. So you can do this by dropping down under managed manage requests and then choosing company account request and the first thing you need to do in the top box the series box is find the a code for the company that you're interested in and you can search for companies by clicking on find series so if I just type in the name of the company that I want to find here so for example I'm going to look for Pfizer which is the American pharmaceuticals company and click on search. What you'll often find with many searches is that you get a lot of results. So you can see for this search, I've got nearly 7,000 results. So I am going to narrow that list down. If you're looking for companies, then search within the equities section. And that immediately narrows my search to just 19. And then if I'm interested in um, the United States market, I can click here on United States. And then usually the main companies have three stars against them. So I'm going to choose Pfizer here with three stars. You can see this is its data stream uh, symbol or code here. I can see how many years of data are available for this country, so 42 years in this case, and then I can see the stock exchange and the currency of the information. When, you're, when you've got a company highlighted, if you look lower down, then you'll be able to see a little bit more information about this company, so you can check it's the company that you're really interested in. So to select the company, I can tick and then click on use and that puts the code for Pfizer into the box here and then for a company account I can choose here by clicking on this little company accounts button the options that are available so the, the company accounts are divided into different types of companies so if, if you've got a bank 
choose the bank options. If you've got an insurance company, choose insurance option. And for other financial institutions, choose other financial. But for anything else, so for my pharmaceuticals company, I'm going to choose the industrials option. So you can see that you can look at the income statements, you can look at the balance sheet. And if you scroll down here, there are lots of other options as well. So for example, we could go for the industrials profit and loss key items. So that puts the code for that um, information into the, the box here. And then I can just choose the number of years that I'm interested in. Minus four YE means the last four years. If I were to change that to minus five, YE, that will give me data for the last five years. Just deselect embed because that will link your spreadsheet to the data stream computer and you'll want to take your spreadsheet away to work with it so you don't want it to be linking and trying to search data stream all the time. And then you can just submit and it should then find the profit and loss for Pfizer for the last five years. Uh, so there are the profit and loss items and there here's the data for each of the five years. You'll see there's nothing there for 2015 at the moment. That probably means that the company hasn't filed their results yet this year and that's why that data isn't available. If you go on then to do another, to make another request for more data, just make sure that you click in a new cell because otherwise it will just overwrite the information with further information if you don't do that. So I'm just gonna click over here. And, and then this time we'll have a look, um, imagine that we're looking for, for share prices for a company. So for a share price, you can either use the static request or you can use the time series request. If you just want one share price for one day or one month, then use the static request. But normally um, people are looking for data over time. So what I would do is click here on the time series request. So I'm going to click on the time series request. And that gives me a box that looks very similar to my company accounts request box, but you'll see that there are slightly different options. So again, the first thing I want to do is click on find series so I can find the companies that I'm interested in. So I'm going to look for the companies or the supermarkets, Tesco and Sainsbury. So I'll start by putting in Tesco. Again, I'll limit to equities and I'll limit to the UK in this case and then I'm going to look for that one with the, the three stars so I can see that there are 50 years of data here for Tesco and I will click there and then I'm going to click search for my second company Sainsbury Oops. the filters stay the same so I'm still looking at, at the UK and I'm still looking at equities so I've got the three star Sainsbury up here. And then when I'm ready, when I've selected all my companies, I just click on use and that will bring the codes for Tesco and Sainsbury into the box here. And obviously you can choose many companies if you want to. If we don't put anything into the this second box into the data types box, then data stream will look for share prices. So it will look for closing share prices up to yesterday's share price when the stock market's closed at the end of the day. Again, you can put you can either put in a date range, so a start date for your time series and an end date, or you can just do something like this. Minus two Y will give you the last two years so we can leave it like that for now and then we can choose the frequency of our share prices so you can have them daily weekly monthly quarterly or annually so let's just stick with daily 
And then I would just come down here and uh, display the row and column titles and headings and display the currency, but don't embed. And now I will submit the request and DataStream will go and find the data. So for a small request like that, it does it very quickly and you can see we've got share prices starting two years ago. And if I scroll down, we'll see that we've got yesterday's share price there. Now, we've got quite a lot of data on this page now, so I'm just going to move to a new sheet in Excel to download the next set of data. So another thing that you can do in DataStream is to look at indices like the FTSE 100. So for example, let's go into the time series request again and we will search this time rather than for a company we'll search for the index name so we'll look for the FTSE 100 and it hasn't found anything very helpful because we're still looking in the equities category so we're still searching for companies so if we just stop filtering there and then change it to equity indices then we'll be searching for for indices and you can see that FTSE 100 has come up at the top here with uh, with three stars so for the FTSE 100 we've got a 37 year history so it's 37 years of data so I'm going to select that one and use it and then you can either leave your code like that and then you will get aggregate figures so you get average figures say average share prices for example for all the companies in the FTSE 100 at the moment what you might want to do though is look at each of the companies in the FTSE 100 and so what you can do there is just if you can click in the box just add an L add the letter L at the beginning before FTSE 100 but the beginning of the code and that allows you to list out all the companies that are in the FTSE 100. You'll also need to tick the box here so this means time series for each item or each company in the list so I will check that and then I can add my data types here so as before if we leave it empty it will just look for the closing share price but we can look for other data types and DataStream has many other data types. So if I click on the data types button, we then get a search. And before I start searching, I just need to change this so that we're searching for equities because we're looking at individual companies. So we're looking for equities data types. So for example, if I wanted to find the market value, if I type in here market value, I can look at all the matches and you'll see how many data types there are available and I can choose um, market capital at the top there and you'll see that the code for that is MV. Just bear in mind that we don't actually have access to all of the, the data types that are available here. So if you do get error messages, it may be because the data types you're looking for aren't available. We do have the data stream ones and we have the world scope ones and we have the ESG asset four, which is environmental, social and governance information, but we don't have the others that are listed here. You can then go and just search for all the other data types that you're interested in. So for example, I'm going to look at the total return index. So I'm going to just type in the word return and up here I can see the total return index. Again, anything with three stars, they tend to be the sort of key data types. So those are the ones that are most commonly used. When you've selected all the data types you want, you can click on use. Then again, you can select your date range. So let's say this time we'll go for the last five years, but rather than 
having daily prices or daily information, we will go for quarterly. I'll keep all these boxes ticked, don't tick in bed, and submit. And then it should give me those two data types for each of the companies in the FTSE 100. So we can see here we've got the MV, the market value for that company, and then we've got the total return index for that company. So that's a really good way to look at lots of companies or download data for lots of companies at the same time. And there, there's another way with DataStream that you can download data for lots of companies at the same time. And that's where you, you can look at um, all the companies in a particular country within a particular industry. So for example, you could look at all the companies in UK banks or all the companies in the Japanese car industry. So we'll use Japanese cars as an example. So again, I'm going to just go to a new sheet in Excel, go back to the time series request and go into find series again. And then I'm just going to stop filtering and um, go up, choose equities because we want to look at companies and then I'm going to go up to explore. And that then gives you the equities explorer. So you can choose the country that you're interested in. So if I scroll down here, then I can find Japan. And when I click on Japan, I can see a list of industries that are available. So if I'm interested in car companies, there's an option here for automobiles and parts. And that's given me a list of a 135 Japanese um, automobile and, and automobile parts companies. So some of these may not be what you want. If you were looking at pure car manufacturers, some of these may just make parts of cars. So you can, if you want to, just select the ones that you're interested in, or what I'm going to do for now is just to choose all of them. So I select all, and that puts all of those companies, the codes for all of those companies into my box here. And then I can just do what I did before. You'll notice when you use DataStream that it, it remembers the codes. So if you've already searched for a set of codes, you don't have to keep searching for them again. So these are the codes that I used just now for market value and total return index. I can also, if I know the codes, I can also just put in a comma and type in a code. So P is the code for price. So that's the default. That's the closing share price. So if we don't have anything in the box, we get P automatically, but we can also add P and then we will get the share prices for these companies as well. I'm then, uh, we'll leave it at the last two years. And this time let's go for monthly figures. And we'll leave the option set as we did before. And we will click on submit and then it's downloading data for each of those companies in the Japanese automobile industry and we're getting the three different items for each one so for example this company we've got its market value we've got its RI and uh, we will have its share price as well over here so P for price so monthly share prices for the last two years. So that's a summary of how you can find company information on DataStream, but DataStream also has lots of other types of information. So if we go back to the time series request and go into series, you can get a sense of what's here. So I'm just going to go back to the text search and you will have noticed that DataStream is broken down into categories. So we've already had a look at the equities category for companies, equities indices for indexes like the FTSE 100, but you'll see there are lots of other categories. So if you want financial information about bonds and convertibles, that's here. There are commodities prices, credit default swaps. The economics section is a huge section of macroeconomic 
data. So this is country level economic data. So things like GDP and wages within a company. And you'll see that's showing the, that they have over 6 million different economic variables for, for some countries. So there's a lot of information there. We've also got exchange rates, futures, interest rates, investment trusts, options, unit trusts uh, and warrants. So as I said, DataStream is a very large, very complex database. So we have got help available for you if you need it. So let's just leave DataStream now. and come back to the library website. So this page here, if you go to library slash tutorials slash data stream is where you can find the booking information for using data stream. And uh, you will also find guides to help you use it. So guide one is for all new users that shows you what to do, how to get started. And then you choose the guide that covers the type of information that you're interested in. So if you just want to look at one company or, or a small number of companies, you can use guide two. If you want to look at lots of companies within a sector in a particular country, then you can use guide three. If you want to look at uh, a stock index like the FTSE 100, then you can use guide four. Exchange rates is guide five. Uh, guide six is for those macroeconomic variables. And then guide seven is for everything else. And you'll see that if we open one of the guides, they are very step by step. They show you exactly what you need to do, where you need to click to do the things that you want to do. So it's screenshots and you'll see the clicks are in bold here so you can follow the, it very simply.